Hello and welcome to another edition of the AFTV podcast, Transfer Specials. I'm your host, Giles, and on today's show we will be chatting to a Newcastle fan, trying to get the inside track on Arsenal's new signing, Matthew Debushi. Uh, joining me to ask the questions will be my co-host, Mario. Mario, how are you? Doing well, thank you for the question. Great man. Um, exciting times ahead for Arsenal. We're spending that money, aren't we? Yes, we are. So fans can't be can't be up in arms, can they? I mean, they, can't, it's, it's, they can't mock Wenger and Orgazidis now. Exactly. Or Dick Law. We actually know who Dick Law is now, don't we? Dick Law is the best person ever. <laughs> up, up, he took Sanchez for a bargain price. Well done. Exactly. Can't ask for any more than that. Okay, so joining us um, tonight is the editor of True Faith, True Faith, sorry, True Faith uh, fanzine. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, Newcastle United fanzine out there. It's Michael. Good evening, Michael. How are you? I'm fine, yeah. Great stuff. Uh, thanks for coming on. Um, I want to ask you, so we'll start by asking you, Matthew Debushi, you're brought in for, I don't know, is it 5 million or 5.5 yeah. million from Lille in 2000? The 12th, was it? Yeah. Or? yeah. Right. Uh, it's January 2012. Yep. Okay. Um, what kind of player was he? I mean, how has he developed since you brought him from from uh, the French League in, uh, here in the Premiership? What kind of player uh, do you make him out to be? Well, we um, we tracked him for quite a, a long time, and it was probably a year after the rumour started that he was going to come to, uh, to Newcastle where he eventually signed, I don't know if you can remember, was signed about five French lads all at the same time, uh, yes. uh, uh, January before last, when we were in a bit of spot of, uh, spot of trouble at the bottom of the league. And um, to, to be honest, he, his first um, six months at Newcastle, he wasn't up to much, to be honest. Um he uh, he looked like he was struggling with the the intensity of the Premier League and the pace, etc. And um, he was he was meant to squeeze out Danny Simpson, and uh, who's subsequently gone to QPR, as you might know. He, um, he, to be honest, I was watching him from the Gallagher end and thinking, I don't see a lot of big improvement on Danny Simpson, to be honest. And this the new last season, uh, when last season started. For, a fir- for the first couple of months, um, he uh, he didn't look up to much, and then something seemed to click with him, and um, and he went on a really good run where he looked solid, particularly as we had that uh, really strong first half of the season last season, you know when we were uh, there thereabouts at the top end of the league where we should be um, towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the year uh, 2013. And um, and subsequent, so that that was probably the real Matthew Debushi, I would like to think. But then in the second half of this season, after we Newcastle sold his mate uh, to uh, P- Johan Kabai to PSG, um, he seemed to go off the boil. Um, he had injury problems, niggles that seemed to keep him out of the team for a while. Sort of rumours that he was keeping himself for the World Cup, etc. Um, so. To be honest, I think, I mean, I hear 11, 12 million quid for him, providing Newcastle reinvest that money. Um, I'm not really heartbroken about him going. Okay. Um, so you think he's a competent attacking fullback then, rather than an, ex- an yeah. excellent one? I, I think, I think um, Arsenal have certainly had better right backs um, in the in the last few years. Um, he's okay. He's. Um, He's, you know, he's one, he's been one of our better players in the last season or so, but that's not a great recommendation because we've been poor. Um, so he's, uh, you know, to be honest, they'll, they'll not be, they'll not be riding in the streets when he, when he, when he leaves. And providing that we can um, use the 12 million quid we get from Arsenal to uh, to invest in a replacement um, who's going to be with us, with us in the longer term. Then um, you know, fair play, go on you go, Matthew. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think are his main qualities? I mean, over the three years or two years that you've seen him play at, at Newcastle, what is in what, what are his main qualities? Well, he gets up and down the lane very well. I think he is a good. He, he has the potential to be a good attacking, um, a good attacking um, 
defender, um, and he'll fit with what what Wenger seems to like, which is he likes players with with a bit of pace, doesn't he? So um, I think he will he will fit in that. Um, he's not a bad defender, um, you know. He can uh, he can put a, a good tackle in, um, but um, I think he's he's all he, his all round game is pretty. You know, I would say he's a seven out of ten, but in all of his in all of his in all of his areas, sometimes he goes missing, and and sometimes he's out of position. Um, but um, you know, Wenger should improve him. But to be honest, he's 28. He's not the type of player that Wenger would would buy. Normally, that he stays away from the uh, players who are more than older than 25, doesn't he? So. Um, so uh, he's okay. I, I, I don't think he's the greatest player that you'll have, you'll, you'll have seen as Arsenal fans, to be honest. But he's, he's competent. Okay, cool. I want to hand it over to Mario. Mario, you got any questions for Michael? Yeah, hi, Mark. Hi, yeah. Uh, I'm interested in uh, to see how uh, how Matthew lines up when a winger goes direct at him. Does he tackle or wait for for the player to make his move and then uh, then defend? Um, difficult one. No, I think he, he, um, the problem that way, Newcastle had last season was that he was in and out of the team, uh, quite a bit. He was out of form, uh, the first month or so, mo- month, two, two months of the season, and then he had, post Christmas, he had quite a number of little injury niggles, but he was out for quite some time, actually. Um, so, in terms of his defensive style, he does what every fullback would do, you know, he, he shows, um, he shows right-footed players the inside on the left and left-footed players the inside on the right, etc. And um, tries to and tries to cover, doesn't go diving in, all of that. He's a pretty sensible kind of defender, to be honest. He's 28, and we're getting him in the prime in his prime year. So that tells us that maybe Wenger uh, trusts him and has faith in him. So he could be a hit at Arsenal, but. Defensively, not nowhere near Sonia. Although offensively, he's a bit quicker and presses up high. So it could it be something uh, more like a wing back playing style we'd be getting in him? No, I don't think he's a wing back. He's a he's a traditional full back. I think he's more um, he's more Lee Dixon than Ashley Cole. <laughs> That's good then. <laughs> well, he's not as good as Lee Dixon. I don't know. <laughs> No one's good as Lee Dixon. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Um, so you're saying the faithful basically aren't that bothered that he's going. You, you, you want to say, as long as the money's reinvested elsewhere, you're happy. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, you know, he's. Um, he's he's coming. He's coming to Newcastle. You know, I, what I don't understand is is that if Wenger liked them, why didn't Wenger get him from Lille when he was younger? I really don't. I, I don't get that, you know. Um, I, I think it was more a case of uh, Samuel's in the prime. That, and then back in 2008, he was like winning, uh, right? You know, he was in the uh, team of the season, sort of uh, getting team of the season awards and accolades. So it would have been very difficult to have someone like him uh, come and back up. Saying he would have had no games, I would have imagined. Well, okay, um, maybe maybe so, but um, mm. well, that's a pretty good. Pretty good explanation, I suppose. Mm. But um, he seems to have missed a couple of players lately from France. He missed Debussy and Kabai, didn't he? I gather. Yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, Newcastle sort of taken over that kind of you know they they're really sort of you know the the major shoppers in the French market now, aren't they? Yeah, well that's because of Graham Carr, um, our chief scout. He's very well respected and well known in um, in in France. And I gather when when Newcastle signed Kabai. And uh, he did well in his first season. Uh, Wenger had a, a meeting with the with the scouting team at Arsenal and uh, and wanted to know why Kabai hadn't been recommended to him, given that we got him for such a small amount of money. And given, yes, it was very given small. that you know, and given that Arsene Wenger doesn't like traditionally, although seems to have got himself out of that habit of spending big sums of money, does he? Yeah, we, we hope. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> Looks like. So we shouldn't be expecting, um, is it Derek Lambeth, or is it Derek Lambeth, or, or, um, Mike actually to say, you know, you know uh, which part of, uh, Debussy's body do you want to spend, uh, 10 million on? We, it should be, <laughs> well, <he's> <laughs> we should have no problem. 
You were very cheeky about Kabai last year, weren't you? Um, you know, offering a pitiful amount of money, and eventually you didn't get him. So he went, yeah. he went, to, he went to P, he went to PSG instead for bigger books. Um, yeah. Which I mean, I suppose the trade-off was we got Ozil, so we're not that. Yeah. Are you really? Are you okay about that? He looked a bit wishy-washy to me there half the last season. Um, yeah, no, I think you know his first season. Different culture. Um, I think this, you know, I always say give a, give a player, the, you know, the second season to see how he, you know, really gets on. Um, You're not signing a kid, you know. You didn't sign a kid in, in uh, Ozil. You signed a, a, a absolutely top professional player from Real Madrid. It's not like you were signing somebody from some backwater division. I know, but, you know, with, with, with the English league, it's, it's difficult to... You know, you see, you see, you know, some players that struggle to fit in in the first season, and you know, they make it, they they come on strong. I mean, the the, the best example for Arsenal was Robert Pirès. His first season, he was, he didn't, he wasn't interested in the physicality of the league. He was diving all over the place and whatnot. Um, you know, it's only towards the end of the first season that we really start to see, you know, yeah, such a good player he was. Perez, and I think Perez, Perez, came, Perez came from a, you know, from a from the French league, which is which isn't anywhere near. The standard of the Spanish league, um, and but is the standard of the Spanish league that there's only two and a half good teams, isn't there? Really? Well, two, two of those teams just contested the Champions League final, uh, yeah. and the other team was in the semi-final. So, you know, you you, you kind of, I, I I don't think you can you can say that it's not the same. Start if the Spanish league is way ahead of the French league. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the, the three teams that they've got, I suppose you, you, you've got to put... A what did you think from Perez when you signed him? From Monaco, wasn't it? Say that again, sorry? How much did you sign Perez from? He was from uh, Mets, I think Mets. it was. Yeah. No, 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 it was, no, it wasn't Mets. It was, was it Marseille? One of those teams, anyway. About six million or something at the time, or bit, something bit like that. A bit different to Ozil, isn't it? I think, I think the misconception with Ozil is if he's not as busy as Hazard, so people think that, you know... Oh, he's not, you know, he's not, he's not buzzing all around the place. But he's a very, if you look at his stats in the World Cup, he's a, is he the top in chances created, Mario? Yeah, he's the top. Time. You know, um, a lot of his work. Ozo? Sorry. What did you pay for Ozo? The Germans. No, how much did Ozo? Oh, so how much did we pay for him? Yeah. Forty-two and a half million, I think. Wow. Yeah. And he needs a season to settle in. They're very patient. Well, I think we'll see. I think I think we'll see a lot more from him next season. You know, I think we, we're we're quite we're pr- we're quietly confident and you know pretty satisfied with that. And now with uh, the signing of Sanchez as well, I think um, he's a good signer. Yeah, you know, I think we'll uh, I think we'll be all right, and I think we'll show he'll show even more. Of, I mean, he's only twenty five. He's still got time. It's not like um, you know he's twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. He's coming to the end of his career. We've still got time. He's the upside is big. He's huge. Yeah, so, um, good, you know. good very good mm. Alright, uh, Michael, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, you know, hopefully we'll do it again in the season, in the season at some point, you know. We'll um, cross, cross, cross paths again yep. when Newcastle comes to um, Emirates and when we go up to uh, the Gallagate. Okay. Um, great stuff, so I want to thank you for coming on. Okay, thanks, lads. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers. So... That was Michael Martin, editor of the True Faith magazine. Um, Mario, um, what do you make? I mean, he was quite disparaging of um, Matteo Debussy, wasn't he? He didn't seem to. He was a bit much too critical in my eyes. Mm-hmm. But depends on how he sees the stuff around Newcastle. We can't judge him by that. But judging by his performance at a World Cup, he seems good and a decent replacement for Sonia. Not the the best we could have gotten, but I'm pleased with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll do. The, I mean, we got him for two, three years. Surely, whether it's Jenkinson or Bellerin. this new or Beller, Bellerin or or even this this new fella um, that we were talking before, weren't we? Is, uh, is it Javier Manquillo from Atletico Madrid? One of those three might step up in that in that two, three year period. So is that, I think I think it's that bridging gap, isn't it? It's that bridging gap between now and then. And one of those guys, hopefully, at least one of those guys will step into the, into the, into the, into those boots. Um, what's, what's the, what is the, the update on this Manquillo fellow? Well, according to Cadena Ser, uh, which apparently they're reliable in Spain, they said we're about to sign Manquillo from Real Madrid 
uh, on loan with an option to buy after the loan. So we'll see. I, I'd be a bit surprised because I thought that Wenger with signing with signing the Bushi, I thought he had faith in Jenkins and Hector, but apparently he wants to loan Jenko out at least for a season so he can develop. But Wenger knows best. What happens mm. happens. Mm, Wenger knows best. I mean, the, the fact that it's a loan with an option to buy sounds, um, you know, quite ominous, I would imagine, for someone like Jenkins. And I mean, what if what if Mankilo has a great season at Arsenal as an understudy to both Debussy and Jenkinson also has a good season at Newcastle or wherever he chooses to go on loan? Um, it's going to be quite a dilemma for um, Wenger, isn't it? I mean, I, I suppose you could just send Mankilo back on back to his parent club, but um, you know, it's, it's a tricky. It could be a tricky one, could it not? It's going to be a tricky one if that certain thing happens. But if Jenkinson impresses and Mankilo impresses, I think we'd keep both and move Jenkinson centrally and let him be an understudy to Pere or Koscielny. You'd, so, so you'd, you'd see him next season coming back as a, as a cent, as an auxiliary centre half. Only if Mankilo impresses, and, it, and mm. if we really bought him in the end. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I suppose the, the conversation about uh, Jenkinson's abilities as a centre half can be left for another time, I suppose. Uh, have we got any questions? Any listeners' questions? Uh, as for the uh, Debussy, no listeners' question. No one was interested. All focus on Sanchez as <laughs> expected. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. Uh, that's been an Arsenal Fan TV podcast transfer special uh, with me, Giles, and my co-host, Mario. Join us again next time when we dissect the new and potential signings coming Arsenal's way. Thank you and good night. Good night.